2016, 2017 was really the last year that I really felt like I knew what I was doing as like an expert. Um, I've kind of been a jack of all trades for, well, I've been writing software for 15 years and this has been, you know, about 14 years of me being a jack of all trades. Uh, I've written every mainstream modern language at this point. Um, in some way, shape, or form, with actually Swift being the only notable exception. In 2017, I 2016, 2017, I don't know. I'm old. I can't remember which year it was specifically. I worked for LinkedIn, and I commuted from San Francisco down to Sunnyvale. So I would catch a bus at like 6.40 in the morning, ride that bus for like an hour, hour and a half, depending on the traffic. If it rained, three hours, because people don't drive well in rain in California. And what I would do is for a while I worked on things. And then at some point I said, wow, I'm working like eight, nine hours a day. And then I'm also commuting on the bus for an hour to three hours there. And then also an hour to three hours back. Um, I'm working like 14 hours a day. How do I actually turn this time into something that makes me happy? Around this time, I stumbled upon a uh, project at LinkedIn called Lix, which is uh, an A-B testing tool that I have no idea if they still use. But it was written in Clojure, and it was from an acquisition, and I had recently stumbled into Clojure and Lisp and um, just a plethora of different languages that I was really interested in exploring. So I ended up using that time on the bus to deep dive into Clojure, and it is the last language that I felt like I was truly a specialist in. I think I still am probably, despite not writing Clojure for uh, eight years now, I think I'm still probably really really comfortable writing Clojure. And um, if you don't know what Clojure is, it's C-L-O-J-U-R-E. It's a JVM Lisp, a JVM-based Lisp. Um, it has a, a symbiotic relationship with the JVM. I could talk on end about Clojure, and every now and again, someone pops up in a comment and asks why I'm not writing Clojure anymore. So um, I, I don't have a great answer for you, except employability, I guess. Um but uh, yeah, I haven't really felt like an expert in anything since writing Clojure. Since then, I've written TypeScript, Go, um, professionally, Flutter, Dart, professionally, uh, just a mix of things. And don't get me wrong, I think I'm pretty competent with Go and pretty competent with TypeScript, but especially with some of the changes that have gone on in the web and the ECMAScript standards, I don't know if I would consider myself a TypeScript expert anymore. Um, all this to say, I, I kind of don't want to be a jack of all trades anymore. And this is hard for me because I've got projects, I've got a, uh, software as a service that I've been working on for a while now that's written in Svelte and TypeScript. And I love it. I love working in that code base. I have uh, a couple mobile apps that I maintain that are written in Flutter and Dart. I also have a somewhat new project that I just kicked off in Flutter and Dart. Uh, that's a desktop application. And I also, for what it's worth, I love Dart. I think Dart's a fantastic language. But um, I also have been writing a lot of Zig, and you've been seeing that on this channel, and that is kind of what I want to talk about today. So I think that for my own happiness, I want to be a specialist again, not a generalist, a specialist. And this is tricky for me because um, when I look at the languages that I've mentioned, so I've mentioned uh, Go. Actually, you know what? Let's just let's pull up um, like a, a browser and talk through this with some visualization. Potential flashbang in three, two, one. Okay, so I've got this mirror board up here. Um, it is, uh, this is just some diagramming software, flowchart software, drag stuff, draw stuff. I just wanna use some sticky notes to help kind of categorize this. So Go is one of the options. I write Go for work, that's not gonna change anytime soon. So um, whether I like it or not, Paste, please. There we go. Uh, Go is going to have to stay around, but I, Go is not changing a ton, so I'm not super worried about that. I don't think it'll take a lot of effort to stay up to date with the latest going on in Go. TypeScript is another one that I just mentioned. Why did we copy that? Dart is another one that I mentioned. And then finally, we have Zig. There's a plethora of other things. Uh, I say Zig. This really is like Zig, question mark. Um, this could be Odin. 
This could be C3. This could be carbon. This could be rust. This could be NIM. Uh, pro- maybe not NIM. But it, it could be different things. But the fact of the matter is, like, there are certain things that I want to build. I'm just interested in building these just to grow as a developer. So I want to build a database. I want to build... Oh, my goodness, please. I want to build a file system, specifically like a file system in user space. I want to build CLI tools. I want to build... My God, Miro is frustrating me to no end. Let's try this one more time. There we go, good paste. I want to build web servers. And ideally, I'd like for these to be fast. I want to build... Why is that not? Desktop tools. So potentially GUIs, probably GUIs. Okay, so I've got these guys, right? These these languages, these ladies. I shouldn't assume guys. I shouldn't assume ladies. They're really whatever they want to be. They're programming languages. They're these genderless entities, I suppose. Uh, so I've got I've got these languages, right? And I'm trying to figure out how do I how do I accomplish these goals? Oh, I'm totally missing a really important one to me. Microcontrollers. This is what I started learning Zig for. I have programmed so little microcontrollers and Zig, <laughs> despite that being the reason I started picking it up. So I want to build all these things. And really, like the fact of the matter is, I'm going to copy and paste a couple of these so you can see what I'm getting at here. And I'm, I'm sorry for beating around the bush and not just answering the question. This one's weird. These two are weird, actually. And we'll talk about those in a second. I am going to make an assumption here. That is, if I really wanted to, I could make a pretty sufficient file system and go. Bear with me. Oh, of course, I hit the wrong freaking key. Oh, that's technically not true. That should also be in Go. Uh, desktop tools. Bada bing. Desktop tools are interesting. Arguably, any of them. Realistically, I'm going to just put those in Dart, Go, and Zig. I know you can build desktop tools in TypeScript. I don't want to use Electron. Uh, I have probably not ranted to you all, but I have ranted to my friend group, close friend group, I should say. I, I would consider you all friends. Uh, I haven't ranted to you all about this, but uh, Electron's memory consumption drives me bonkers. Part of the reason I stopped using VS Code originally a long time ago was uh, the memory usage was getting to be a little too much on my MacBook that I was using at the time. I was using a really cheap M1 MacBook, the lowest cost one you could get, and I found that when I was running multiple things like Docker, Flutter, and VS Code, uh, and then also OBS at some point in time too, it was too much. So Electron has, uh, I was looking at some of the numbers, Electron was using way more than I expected. I have found that I generally am much happier using NeoVim. Um, that being said, I've swapped back and forth depending on what I'm doing and also depending on the content I'm producing because I understand that uh, NeoVim is not as user-friendly as VS Code. It's easier to learn things when you see people using the same tools that you're using. Uh, okay, so we have this chart, right? We have this big chart. Um, I want to be a specialist. That's the whole point of me talking to you about this. So I need to figure out what do I want to specialize in. I think I'm good at Go. I think I'm good at TypeScript. I think I'm good at Dart. I think I'm okay at Zig. Uh, I'll let you be the judge of that since you've seen most of my Zig content lately. But I think the fact of the matter is, like, there's basically a clear winner here, for me, I should say. Based off the things I want to do, Zig has the longest category, the longest column. And I think, I think I'm really ready to lock in on Zig. 
So this is tricky for me because I've got, like I said, that SaaS project that I'm working on. I've got a couple of Dart mobile apps that I maintain. I've got a, a new mobile, or not mobile, sorry, desktop project in Flutter that I just started like last week um, that I need to maintain and continue to build out. Uh, and if you haven't caught on yet, I have too many projects. That's just what I do. Um, I just don't get excited about writing Go which is great. That is honestly one of the selling points of Go is that it's it's simple and it's not super exciting and fun. And those traits tend to be really good for business use cases. Um, so I don't know, maybe one day I'll change my mind and we'll re-embrace Go as a, as a specialist. But I, I think just when I compare Go and I compare Zig, since those are really the two options for that meet most of my needs, I just don't think that there's much room for me to grow in Go, and I'm just not as excited about it. Um, yeah, TypeScript, there's not much going on here. The web servers can be pretty fast. Uh, I kind of will have to use this for web front ends, and I'm okay with that for now until Wasm gets into a much better state, and then maybe I'll be able to use a little bit of this and then like a lot of this. Um, Dart's interesting... It's a language that I know a lot of people don't know much about or have a lot of visibility into. I really like the language. It's probably one of my favorite programming languages that I've ever written. Um, it, the community is just not there. And a couple of years ago, I tried really hard to do what I could to build out Dart's community ecosystem, basically dedicated a whole year to Dart. Let me actually see if I can find that really quick. As an aside, if we're not connected on LinkedIn and you use that platform, you should totally connect with me. You can search, and that's that's what I look like. So find that, and uh, let's let's connect on LinkedIn. Anyways, this post that I wrote called "Dart All the Way Down." So um, you can read this if you want. Uh, the short and sweet was that um, I think we should give Dart a chance for more than just Flutter, and I'm committing to help build out the Dart ecosystem going forward. This ended up being a year. Uh, I mentioned that I founded a company last year for my Flutter app, and that company is going to build out and share tools for the Dart ecosystem. Some of them may be Flutter as well, but some may not. Um, so, yeah, I I did this. Uh, it turned out okay. Um, but ultimately, I, I lost steam on it, to be completely honest with you. So going back to this, and man, I am rambling and ranting and doing all the things that I normally do, so thank you for sticking with me. But when I look at this list, Zig is clearly the answer. But I'm not good with Zig. I'm okay with Zig. You've seen me write Zig code. Uh, some of it turns out pretty good. A lot of people always tend to have a lot of really good suggestions, and please keep those coming. They're such great opportunities for me to grow. But um, I want to be great. I want to be that person that when those people look at this code, they say, wow, actually, I can't think of a way to do this better. And I'm, I'm not there, but I want to be. So I think what I'm getting at here is I'm locking in on Zig going forward. I want to be a Zig specialist because it's going to be the tool that's going to enable me to build the things that I want to build. So um, hopefully you're here for that and along for the ride. What I plan to do is put together some projects that I think are really going to flex parts of my Zig knowledge that I don't know very well. We're going to turn off Copilot, and then we're going to build those. And I plan to record most of it, if not all of it. We'll see how it goes. Um, meanwhile, I do plan to continue working on the Zig CLIs that I already have on GitHub. So if you haven't seen those... Uh, book is one of them that I actually was working on last night. Um, you should actually check this out. It's starting to get into a pretty good state. Uh, ADL is a really, really tiny one that is way more popular than it should be. Um, <laughs> HTTP spec is another one. Uh, so I, I probably should talk a little bit about these. So book is terminal-based bookmarks. There's a TUI. Um, you can do fun stuff like exporting and filtering based off of tags and opening the bookmarks from the CLI. Um, ADL is a tool for managing architecture decision records. You can see there's a little bit of information on how that works down here. There's really just two paths into the CLI. There's create and region, and that generates something like this for you. So these templates, and you fill them out and do your own thing. Uh, outside of ADL, we have HTTP spec that I plan to spend a fair bit more time on sometime soon. 
Um, so HTTP spec is essentially this tool to uh, take HTTP files and then execute them, but also um, expand upon the HTTP file specification to add assertions to it. So if you are curious about that, you can see what the HTTP spec specification looks like. It's right here. Um, if you, I would love it if you use this, but I also want to call out that if you want something like this but don't have something right now, hurl is um, a pretty good substitute. So it's not HTTP files, but you can get an idea of kind of what these look like, and you can check those out. Uh, and then besides that, I've got one more uh, called Pop Shop. This was actually written in Dart um, a long time ago. So uh, random tidbit, it might be kind of fun to see. If you go back in time, uh, you can see... Um, Wow, my commits are terrible. Uh, obligatory rewrite in SIGs. Everything before this was in Dart. Um, so you could take a look at what that might have looked like in Dart and then what it looks like in Zig now. But the idea with PopShop is essentially you have these YAML files that are... Um, it's it's a proxy server that uses these YAML files for configuration to handle requests. Uh, and you can mock requests and responses. So let's say you're like a front-end developer and you're working with a back-end team. You could essentially build out um, a pop shop uh, implementation you just with YAML and then have an interface for what the server is going to respond and what you're going to accept. And then whenever the server actually implements that, you can, um, instead of mocking, you would just uh, pass through with the proxy server. So uh, yeah, I will continue to work on these. I will continue to come up with new things to do. And to be completely honest with you, I think one of the first things that I'm going to do is probably really deep dive into um, one of the CodeCrafters challenges. It looks like Build Your Own Shell is free this month, so maybe we will restart the Build Your Own Shell with Zig 015. I was kind of hoping to have the async changes in before really deep diving into any of these anymore, um, and CodeCrafters is not using... Uh, nightly builds of Zig or anything similar, which totally makes sense. So we'll we'll see on that. But yeah, um, sorry, I'm rambling again. I just wanted to talk a little bit about what I'm doing and what I plan to do so you have an idea about more of the content. And um, also, like, to be completely transparent, sometimes coming up with the content for this channel is difficult. So if you're interested in any of this stuff, let me know. Because I have so much that I've worked on that I could just quickly put together a legitimately good video on these type of things. So if you're curious about SvelteKit, um, I could put together something there. Uh, probably quite a few advanced topics. Dart, uh, I could go on for a very, very long time about Dart and Flutter. And then Go, I mean, I've done this some on my channel too. But um, you know, if that's something you're interested in, let me know. And I wouldn't mind putting in a Go TypeScript or Dart video every now and again. But um, to reiterate one last time, I am locking in on Zig going forward. I think that it's in a great spot, uh, especially with the async changes being merged into the main branch. Those are available to use. You can start playing around with it. Um, and just from what I've seen, I think it's going to be, it, it, it bodes really well for Zig's future. So I'm excited to fully embrace it for my open source and fun projects. And um, what are your thoughts? Are you also ready to kind of embrace Zig as like your main language? Or is it still just a, a side project language for you at this point? I would love to know. So if you don't mind, let me know in the comments below. Also, don't forget, subscribe to the channel so you can get updates on new videos that ring the bell and like the video. It helps me and I'd like to think that that helps you. Thank you and have a great day.